Welcome to Our Lady Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti. We are celebrating with you today the first Sunday of Advent, which is why I'm wearing this beautiful purple vestment, purple a sign of expectation awaiting the coming of the Christ. Let's pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment to look into our hearts, think about our lives, confess our sins. For all the ways in which we fail to love as we should, especially when we take our own families for granted, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we fail to be courageous in living out the faith, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the good we intend to do each year but don't accomplish, all the sins of omission, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that we may take Christ's coming seriously in our lives. All-powerful God, increase our strength of will to do good, that Christ may find an eager welcome at his coming, and so call us to his side in the kingdom of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves. And our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you, let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken, from your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Once again, O oh Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. 
Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong, then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give you thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge. As the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and in him we are all called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. And this is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks for joining us for this first Sunday of Advent. We begin our new liturgical year. Uh, And just uh, maybe a comment before I get into the readings. You know, I, I very often during this Mass encourage people to be with us as well on personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti, either on YouTube or the Catholic Channel. The whole purpose when I began that particular program, personally speaking, is that people could speak about their personal lives unencumbered. And so even though we're on the Catholic Channel, I talk to atheists, agnostics, Jewish people, Muslims, Catholics, doesn't matter who. I just think that one of the things we need so much in our world is dialogue. In fact, we had Father Aaron Wassman this past week that we, uh, we did an interview with. He's written a great book called The Church's Role in a Polarized Society. And basically, he said we need to learn how to dialogue again, at least listen to people with different points of view. Why do I mention that? Because this week, some of you know the guest is Vice President Pence. And what does he talk about? He talks about his faith and his family. But you know, already I got some objections from people saying we shouldn't even have him on. Because after all, he's a Republican or he was vice president to Mr. Trump. 
And you want to say, wait a second, where are we at in this culture that we can't even listen to each other, that we can't even talk with one another, that we can't personally speak to one another? How can we ever build bridges if we're not willing to say, this person may not be where I'm at, but I owe them a good listen? I said to you over the years that I've spent many, many hours, obviously, with people in the pro-life movement and many, many people who've gone through the abortion experience. But I've also spent lots and lots of time with people who call themselves pro-choice. I've even spent lots of time with people who perform abortions. Why do I do that? I just want to know. I want to understand where people are coming from. I talk to people who agree with the war in Ukraine, those who disagree. Those who are on the side of, of the uh, Palestinians, those who are on the side of the Israelis. Why? Because I think we're obligated to listen to one another, to dialogue openly. That's my hope and personally speaking. So you folks who objected to Mike Pence, anybody can come on and talk about what he talked about, God and family. Didn't talk about politics at all. What a wonderful thing if we keep on talking to each other. All right, enough with the comment about the show. Now let's get into the readings. First of all, this passage from uh, the book of Isaiah. Here I think is the key phrase. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? You know what's going on here? We're being told by the people, if you told us the right thing to do, we'd do it. If you directed us and made us make right choices, we wouldn't get into trouble with our God. But you leave us free. What's the matter with you? You could make us all good all the time, which goes back to what we've talked about so often. Could God have created every one of us exactly the same? Of course he could. So why do they make us all different? Why does a woman who has five children have five such distinct and unique children? Why is it that every thumbprint that you make and I make around the world of the billions of people is uniquely made? Because that's what God wanted. He made us uniquely and wonderfully one at a time. And he also gave us this incredible gift that you give to people you love. It's called free will. Look, if I say to someone I'm dating for years and years, you better ask me to marry you, you better give me a ring, we better get set up for a date for marriage, sooner or later you just give in, you say, fine, this is the date, here's the ring, we'll get married. But isn't it better when you hear about a bride or groom who didn't know that the person they're dating had come to that decision and said, would you please marry me when it's freely offered? You can say, don't forget my birthday's coming up, you better get me this and this and this, and then not be surprised at all when the boxes show up on your birthday. Well, what about the gift we get that we didn't expect from the person we didn't expect it from? How great a feeling is that? Well, that's what free will is all about. Choosing the right thing to do because it is the right thing to do. As some of you, if you're as old as me, will remember there was a comedian named Flip Wilson. And he had a, a character, a cross-dressing character named Geraldine. And every time she'd sin or do something terrible, she'd have this line that became famous, the devil made me do it. It's not me, it's the devil in me that made me do this particular thing. Well, in some ways, I think that's what we're looking for. To be able to blame either the devil or God for the things that happen in our lives instead of owning it and saying, God, I know you love me so much that you've created me individually and you've given me free will so that hopefully in freedom I will choose the right thing to do. Isn't it much more valuable when your kids are not hectored into doing the right thing but just do the right thing because they know it to be the right thing? That's what this reading is calling us to. Hey God, why didn't you make it all better? Why didn't you make us do the right thing? Why do you allow us the possibility of freedom to sin? Because our God is saying in this reading, I love you. I love you so much that I hope you'll come to me. I hope you'll choose me. I hope you'll choose my ways. But it'll mean much, much more if you do it in freedom, if you do it because you chose the right road, not because someone put a spiritual gun to your head. What a wonderful gift God gives us. not easy to have free will and to be obligated then hopefully to choose the right thing to do. But isn't that the greatness of God? I make you wonderfully, one of the time, uniquely made, and I give you the freedom to choose the right road. And I hope and pray you'll do that. I'm not going to force you. I'm going to invite you because the greatness of your humanity is you have a soul and you can make choices that God willing are in conformity with the choices God would make for us if he were doing the choosing. Okay, let's go to that second reading, St. Paul to the Corinthians. Listen to this passage. You are not lacking in any spiritual gifts. St. Paul is saying, hey, you may think, you know, I, I might do the right thing if only I had good spiritual gifts, if I was stronger spiritually. He's saying almost innately, as a follower of Christ, you've got the gifts within you. 
You've got them. You just have to activate them, actualize them. Give me an example of what I mean. Um, years ago, the church made this decision. Well, we don't know if kids who are seven years old in the second grade really should be going to confession. Do they really know the difference between right and wrong? So in many, many parishes, they passed confession on to the fourth and fifth and sixth graders. And we did that for a few years. You know what we found out? That kids, in fact, do know almost innately at an early age what's right from what's wrong. They know what's right from what's wrong. They know it when they're 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And any priest who hears kids' confessions can tell you. You don't have to wonder, does this child understand the difference between what's good and what's bad? They know it. And that's what St. Paul is talking about. He's talking about the fact that we have Christian conscience. Some people would call it natural law. That allows us to understand the difference between right and wrong. And why we should choose the right road. We may not choose that. We may still embrace sin. But we should never fool ourselves into believing, if only I had spiritual gifts. I do. You do. And those spiritual gifts are given to us through the sacraments and through our spiritual lives. And they allow us to make right decisions. For us to make right decisions. Again, going back to the first reading. Not because anyone's making us, but because we innately know. Good example. I was talking to a wonderful woman this week. She's a grandma. And uh, she was telling me she'd had issues, you know, with God in the church for many years. So she had not even been going to church, but especially not going to communion when she went to church. So after the first communion of her grandson, he asks her, he's seven years old. He says, hey, Granny, let me ask you something. How come I receive communion and you don't? And she says, well, I got some things I got to work out with God first. And what does the seven-year-old say? Well, then, Granny, work it out. Even at seven, he knows. We can fix things. We can make them better. We can make right choices. We can fix our lives and become one with the Christ we love. St. Paul says, don't blame the absence of spiritual gifts. You've got it. You've got the Christmas, Christian conscience, and it works. But you've got to use it, activate it, and make right decisions and right choices because you know in your heart of hearts what's good from what's bad. You know the difference. And so hopefully, in freedom, we choose the right thing to do. Okay, finally, let's go to this great gospel of St. Mark. Watch, watch. therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming. I think our natural state, for most of us, unless you are an extraordinarily on top of it in your life kind of person, I think the word that best describes most of us is delay, delay, delay. I have shared with you guys that, uh, you know, for 20 years I took care of my mother, got into every doctor's appointment, made sure when she was in the hospital I stayed with her every minute that she was there. I was really a great caretaker. But I didn't, during those years, pay much attention to my own health. I'm trying to catch up now by taking care of that. I was delaying. I knew someday I got to get around to taking care of all the things that we should each of us be doing, going to the doctor, having tests taken. But who wants to go through that? Who wants to be plugged with all those needles and tests and machines around you? And nobody, right? So we delay. I'll get to it someday. I'm going to make a will someday. I'm going to rectify things that are broken in my life someday. Delay, delay, delay. It's natural to us. Look, nobody wants to look at the hard stuff. Nobody wants to do the things that we'd rather pass on. It's part of our human nature. And there are people who are not like us. There are people who seem to have all the T's crossed and the I's dotted. But I don't know about you. I'm not one of them. If I can put it off till tomorrow instead of doing it today, bravo. And yet, what's the Lord saying? Stop being so stupid, Jim. Don't you know you don't have forever? Don't you know one day, and you know not what that day will be, you'll be called home. So be on watch. Be ready. Don't fix your life or get rid of your sins or do the right things someday down the line, delay, delay, delay. But choose now to say, Lord, you're right. I don't know. Maybe I have just today. Maybe I have 20 years. But either way, when the time comes, I will not be found wanting by putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. You want to make peace with somebody in the family? What better time than Advent? Don't delay. You want to finally make a will so your children aren't running around crazy when you go? Do it today. You want to fix things that you always meant to do in terms of being charitable and kind and being a peacemaker? This is the time to do it. You know, we call Advent the time of waiting or expectation. It's a time in which we're supposed to fix the things that need to be fixed. And stop, stop, stop that great human inclination to delay. Okay, if you remember in past years what I've 
done during Advent is tried each week to come up with an idea of something every one of us can do that might make this season more in alignment with our Christ. So, uh, again, I go to my pictures, and this one's a big one. You'll love this one. This is a man. Many of you may know, but many of you will not know. I know young people have no idea who he is. They know about John Paul II, St. John Paul II, because he was kind of an extraordinary, long-lived pope and saint. But this is the guy right before him, John Paul I. He was the archbishop, the cardinal from Venice. His election was a surprise. And what was even more shocking was his pontificate was one month long. He had come to the Vatican with ill health that no one was taking care of him. And within one month, this beautiful man uh, went home to God. But that man was known by the whole world very simply as the smiling pope. And so what's my little suggestion for this Advent season? I hope you watch that 1951 version of A Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge is played by Alistair Sim. And you cannot look at a movie like that and see the scowling, unhappy, miserable face of Ebenezer Scrooge in his first incarnation and then not see the conversion at the end of the movie when he realizes the meaning of Christmas and why we're in the world to do good. And to see the smile and, and the joy and the, the life-giving affirmation that comes through in his face just by smiling. He does good things, he accomplishes good things, but importantly, he changes the look. You know, I have in my wall in my office a beautiful quote from Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta, that I love. Peace, she says, begins with a smile. You go up to someone scowling with the facce de brut, as we say in Italian, and you put up all their defenses. How are they ever going to let you in? How are they ever going to like you if you come at them with a scowl? This one-month-long pontificate, John Paul I, did something amazing. He had followed Paul VI, now also a saint, and Paul VI was a very holy but very serious man. Smiling did not come to him naturally. He looked like he had the burden of the world on his shoulders, and he kind of did. And then along came this man who would tell stories and love people, embrace people, and smile. And it freed them wonderfully to welcome him and his message into their hearts. What I'm saying is, here's an idea for the season of Advent. Can you approach every person not warily, not with a puss on your face, not with a dour expression. But can you try to say, I'm going to give everybody the benefit of doubt and approach every person, the person I know and love, the person I'm not so who, sure who they are, with a simple smile that says, I welcome you into my life. I'm going to bring, if I can, a little joy into your presence. I'm going to greet you as this Holy Father did, who, by the way, is now beatified. He's on his way to canonization, God willing. His, uh, he was beatified last year, September 4th, 2022. And a man who teaches us very simply, just greet people with joy. The smiling Pope. What does Mother Teresa say? Peace begins with a smile. And now as a people of faith, let's together profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Now with confidence in the goodness of God, let's offer our prayers of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayers. That church leaders may be blessed with wisdom and holiness to guide the church in this season of Advent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That peace will flourish 
among nations afflicted by war and strife and the leaders to those nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians may follow the gospel mandate to be on guard against all forms of disrespect for the sanctity of human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in, the, in our parish and family members who are ill and enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Baby Mia Scats, Patricia Valdaro, Eva Singer, Patricia Cardone, Miriam Burlamson, Philip DeFalco, Natalie Gallo, Olga Matthew, Richard Chaplin, David Hungerfold, Maurizio Medina, Marie Del Moro, Ina Pichatello, Frank Cassano, Jill Renda, and Francis Bonamico, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Rosalinda Rotondo, Irene Mary Darling, Francesco Coppola, Kathleen Mary Weisbrod, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Scott Schneider, Robert Snyder, Purgatorial Society, Walter and Patricia Sunaski, Rita Smith, Joseph Cooney Sr., Gaetano Emila Jr., Susan Bernaski, Philip P., and Philip W. Vaccaro. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As I mentioned to you, with Advent, we begin a new list of people I specially pray for. And so if you want to be on that list or have somebody you love on that list, by all means, get in touch by just emailing us at the Parish of Our Lady of Lourdes. So among the sick, I want to pray for Jose, Joe Senna. I want to pray for Glenn Hudson, for Jamie Scotto, for Joe Falgiano, for Tom Slade. Tom is undergoing heart surgery on Monday. So Tom, we're keeping you in special prayer. Kathy Bordengo, Judge Anthony Falanga, I pray for Eddie Mullins. I pray as well for Mary O'Brien, for Tommy Burke, for Tom and Patty Yanch, for Katie O'Connor. I want to pray for Angelo and Al Clemente. Angelo has had an amazing battle with illness, but he really believes that the prayers of so many of you have been part of the, his healing experience. So, Angelo, glad to pray for you again. And I want to pray as well for Leanne Lasanti. I want to pray too for um, one more intention that just came in. My friend Debbie Walker asked us to pray for her brother Chris, so we do that. And then I want to pray too for those who have passed, remembering uh, my friend Mary Ann Vale lost her mom last week, and I pray for the, uh, the comfort of that family. I want to pray for Craig Scott, for Bessie and TC Center, for Thomas Minter. Thomas was four year old, four years old when he went home to God, and I know his family is suffering terribly from his loss from that beautiful child. So Thomas Minter. I pray for Roland Rossi, the dad of my friend Tony Rossi, and for uh, Jenna Tuller, for Margie Smith, Margaret Mary Smith, wonderful mom of a great family of people, the Smiths, Tessie, Teresa Palmo, Phil Corderaro, great guy from my home parish, uh, passed away very recently, a friend of mine for life. Frankie Cosetta, also from West Hempstead. Billy and Michael Sarasoli. Billy Sarasoli, their dad. I pray too for Ray and Monica Carrison, for Margaret O'Connor Lasanti, for Bridget Clementi, for Cecilia and Nicholas Lasanti, Irene and Tom Romano, Ed June and Eddie Jandovitz. I pray as well, just got the mail today, for my friend Christina Formato, and for all the people we love who have passed from this life to the next. I want to pray, as always, for special intentions for peace in the Ukraine and justice there uh, against oppression. I want to pray for the free people of Taiwan and Hong Kong and all those who long to be free. I want to pray for our first responders, how much we depend on these police and firefighters and EMTs, especially in times of chaos like our own. I pray that our public officials might be guided by a true sense of what's right. We talked about that in the readings, to follow their conscience and do the right thing. I pray, too, for our men and women in the armed forces and for the goodness they do for us. I pray for doctors and nurses and orderlies, all those people who every day try to keep us healthy. I pray for your special intentions and mine, and let's join together in giving them all to the Mother of God. As together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Father in heaven, may our communion always help us to be one with you. From all that you give us, we present to you today this bread and wine. And as we serve you now, accept our offering and sustain us with your promise of one day sharing the glory of eternal life. We ask you to grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we dwell always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is our brother and our Lord. When he humbled himself to come among us as a man, he fulfilled the plan that you formed long ago, and he opened for us the way to salvation. Now, this Advent season, we watch for the day, hoping that the salvation promised us will be ours, when Christ our Lord will come again in his glory. And so now, with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory as we join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the fount of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts of bread and wine to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death which he freely accepted out of love for us, Jesus took bread in his sacred hands and gave you, Father, thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of our world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving chalice, and we thank you for counting us as worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that by partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we might all be united as one family by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and make us grow in love together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. We ask you to bless and remember all of our brothers and sisters who've gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, and with all the saints and martyrs and angels who've done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son and our brother, Jesus Christ the Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. I confess to you that when I was talking in the homily about the gospel and our natural human inclination to delay, 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 no one is more guilty of that than me, but I know that Jesus is saying, hey, this Advent, get with the program, do the good now. For you and I to be motivated to use this special season as a time to accomplish the good, to put aside the bad, and to accomplish what God asks of us, let's pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ Bring us all to share in everlasting life. Together we pray our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. A couple of uh, thoughts and ideas. One is just to invite you, especially if you live in Long Island, to participate in, once again, the Giving Tree. It's a, a tree we have in the lobby of our church where we put ideas on things that families will need, families in need will, will have a desire for, gifts for their kids. And it's beautiful to see every Sunday how that tree becomes naked with people taking the cards down and trying to make somebody's Christmas happy. So if you live around here, you can just do that by coming to our church. If you don't, just know you too can participate in Parish Outreach's Giving Tree just by supporting us here at Our Lady of Lourdes. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, we're inviting people to be with us on the 9th of December, where we'll have not only the lighting of the Christmas tree after the 5 o'clock Mass here in the church, but also lessons and carols, where our wonderful music ministry team will present carols that focus us on the Christmas season. I wanted to also thank the Knights of Columbus. Last week and this coming week, they've been selling in the lobby those wonderful uh, uh, signs and uh, lawn signs that say, you know, keep Christ in Christmas, remember the reason for the season. And everything they make on the, the sale of those signs is for parish outreach and again for families in need, especially during the holidays. So my thanks to the Knights of Columbus and all of you who have already taken home signs that you put on your lawn that say keep Christ in Christmas. Remember, he is the reason for the season. I also want to mention, of course, who my guests are. I'm personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti this week. Again, either listening to XM, the Catholic channel on Sundays, or by going to YouTube on your computer, just writing in personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. As I mentioned during the homily, this week's guest is Mike Pence, along with his daughter Charlotte. What do they talk about? A wonderful book that they've written called Go Home for Dinner. Like, if you want to find the meaning of life, you'll find it in your family and your God. A wonderful interview, non-political, and a wonderful interview with the Vice President and his uh, delightful daughter. So that's this week, Mike Pence and Charlotte Pence. And the next week, the, uh, the guest is the Reverend Dr. Russell Levinson. Now, we had him on once before. He wrote a best-selling book called... Uh, Witness to Dignity. He was the parish priest for George and Barbara Bush for many years, and he talked about the side of them we didn't see. But now he has a new book, and it's called In God's Grip, What Golf Tells Us About God, believe it or not. So if you have somebody in the family who's a golfer, you'd especially want to watch this program with Reverend Dr. Russell Levinson, uh, a wonderful pastor from uh, Houston, Texas, who's written a couple of great books, and he's our guest next week on Personally Speaking. My friends, let's pray. Father in heaven, may the communion that you have allowed us through this Eucharist teach us always to love heaven. And may its promise and its hope guide our path on earth. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now please for the special blessing or Advent, if you could bow your heads. You believe that the Son of Man came once before. You look for him to come again. May his coming bring each of us the light of his holiness and the blessing always to be a people of freedom. Amen. Amen. May God make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, untiring in love, all the days of our lives. Amen. Amen. We rejoice that our Redeemer came to live with us as a man. When he comes again in glory, may he reward us with the promise of eternal life. Amen. Amen. And my friends, may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. People, look, peace, the time is near for the crowning of the year. Make us far as you are able, trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today, 
Love the guest is on the way.